Welcome back to the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Travis Schreier, Senior Analyst for BOL on a Friday morning, January the 19th, 2024. Right next to me, we've got Andrew Bone, Senior Recruiting Editor for BOL. And of course, right down there in the bottom square, the one, the only, Tim Watts, Site Publisher for BamaOnline.com. And guys, it's almost as if we can set our alarms here on breaking news as it relates to the transfer portal this time. Julian Sayan, the five-star quarterback signee for the Alabama Crimson Tide for the 2024 cycle upon, I guess, learning of the commitment of Austin Mack, the Washington transfer uh, on Thursday night. Very talented-looking young player. Uh, is it is it as easy as connecting those dots, Tim Watts, or is that jumping ahead maybe a little bit? I mean, I think so. I mean, I just posted on the roundtable that – they're in a very awkward situation. If you take somebody from outside, you you risk rocking the boat with the current roster. You can't necessarily count on the current roster staying. We've seen guys left that didn't even give them a chance to talk to them. So, um, also, you need guys to leave to make room for others to make it a more attractive place. So, it's definitely a rock and a hard place. But, you know, at the end of the day, people don't want to hear this because they think they should make every decision. Some people – but, man, this is a coach. You better do what you think's best because you don't want to be listening to me and making your decisions. The next thing you know, you're fired. So none of this is easy. But I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence that Austin Mack committed last night and that today Julian Sayans in the portal. Yeah, I think you hit on it, Tim. I like the conviction from Kalen DeBoer. Now, we'll see how it all works out. Uh, but it takes a bold individual first to follow in the footsteps of Nick Saban yeah. and perhaps even bolder – to come in and make some moves that might prove painful in the first 100 days or so. Um, Andrew, you spoke with uh, Austin Mack, right, on Thursday evening and got some in-depth thoughts from him in terms of what went into his decision to follow Kalen DeBoer. And remember, it's not just Kalen DeBoer. It's Ryan Grubb in this evaluation process. He's the offensive coordinator. He's the quarterback's coach. So you had to have a couple of stamps of approval, right, if you're Austin Mack? Yeah, I mean, this is a kid that uh, reclassified. He was originally supposed to be in that 2024 class, reclassified to 2023, signed with Washington, went there, was redshirted this season, but obviously you know, worked under Coach Grove, Coach DeBoer, and um, and also uh, you know, learned probably a little bit from, uh, from Michael Penix while he was there. Um, you know, he told me, he said – praised Coach DeBoer uh, for his you know, just player relationship. And and I know a lot of Alabama fans are going to look at that and say, well, he hadn't done a great job right away. Well, <laughs> these weren't, weren't necessarily his players just yet. I mean, these are guys that he was trying to recruit as soon as he got stepped foot on campus. And first time he's met, you know, many of them was this week, if, if not all. So, you know, th this is going to take a little bit of time. But I, I think that, you know, from talking to Austin – yeah, he really praised both of those coaches as far as developing men uh, on and off the field. Uh, talked he heavily about Coach DeBoer and how he's able to, uh, you know, get a tight knit brotherhood in that locker room, and that's what's going to be needed. Guys that are stick sticking around right now, not entering the transfer portal, uh, that are riding this wave out with this new coaching staff, uh, they're going to be a very tight knit brotherhood because they are going to be the guy that said. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to go anywhere else. I'm going to stick around and uh, and you know do what's best for you know the University of Alabama. So it's going to be there's going to be some growing pains, obviously, but yeah, I think in the in the end, uh, everybody's going to be okay. Um, let's, let's, I, let's I had a great play. staff this week uh, so far, so let's see how things go. Travis, let's dig into Austin a little bit more. All yeah. right, yeah, that's where well, I was going next with you. I had. I'm shocked that, like, people just react. Nobody, 99% of us didn't know who the hell Austin Mack was last night until he committed. I've never dug, dug, done a deep dive into him. But there was conviction, I mean passion, that this guy wasn't good from several people. So I had to scramble, I had to make calls. I like his first initial look. Let's start with these list is 6'8 in the database. I don't think I've seen a quarterback that tall since Mark McGuire's brother, Dan. Dan, yeah. Dan back in San Diego State. But 6'6, six six, we got a shade over 6'6. Six six. Um, 
The story that's so interesting is he reclassified after the final rankings were done for 2023. So he couldn't even go up. I was talking to director of recruiting rankings, Charles Power. He couldn't even go up because the rankings were finalized. I think he was recruited as a 2024. Great job by DeBoer and staff getting him in there and not having to fight with him. But again, this has got through for a, in a tough area on a really good team, Jonah Williams, where he's from, his alumnus. Paulson. He threw for 40 touchdowns. He threw for five interceptions. He's 18 years old today. He won't even be 19 till June, I believe. So a lot to like when you see this. And this has nothing to do with Julian Sainer, or Jalen Miller or anybody else. But if you stopped and look at this guy, you know, I know Travis watches film. Andrew does. Yeah. I mean, did you not see some things you liked? I, I definitely did. Not just that he looked like the 15-year-old kid playing in the 11-year-old league. At six six plus, I mean that's yeah. kind of what the first impression is of him. And then you think about what you said; he plays at a high level, or did play at a high level of California high school football. So, you know, that wasn't academy ball; that was big time California high school football. He played against. I liked his pocket awareness. Obviously, like his arm talent, he shows some ability to process based on coverages and where to go with the football quickly and accurately, and you know, look, I thought it was interesting that Washington had gone to Will Rogers from the transfer portal, the Mississippi State quarterback, perhaps as the successor to Michael Penix. Now, does that mean Rogers was a slam dunk to win the job ahead of Mac for 2024 if all things stay the same in Seattle? Well, seeing as how DeBoer and Ryan Grubb were more than happy to bring Mac over with them, maybe it wasn't a slam dunk. In retrospect, May have been more of a spring competition, and if Rodgers was ahead, fine. If he, He's your bridge guy to Mac in 2025, if that's the case. Because as you pointed out, Tim, this is a young, young dude. And if that's not the case, it's not all that difficult now to have envisioned Mac taking the reins from Penix for 2024. And so, Andrew, if you're, if you're uh, DeBoer and Grubb right now, if you can improve the most important room, on your football team, you're going to do it, right? No doubt. And who, who knows? Um, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. You, you never know if a player was going to enter the transfer portal you know, after the spring, you know, if they didn't win the quarterback competition. So you, you're trying to get some players in that are going to stick with the program, that love your program already, that love this coaching staff already. Austin Mack isn't guaranteed the starting quarterback position spot. I don't know if he's guaranteed the, the number two spot right now, but he they brought him in. They liked him. They would have left him at Washington or not brought him in here if they didn't have uh, you know a lot of high interest in him and, and belief in him. So I, I think that this is a kid that you know you got to be patient with. Uh, you got to wait and see how he kind of develops. But you know, for anybody upset about it, you know I, I get it because you lost. Uh, Julian saying from this class, but who's to say Julian saying, you know, may not have exited the uh, the program you know, later in the spring. So uh, just have to kind of see how it goes. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a tough pill to swallow for some, but it's gonna be all right. Like I said, again, Tim, boy, when you think about the future yeah. now for Austin Mack and Julian saying, Ryan, uh, excuse me, Kalen DeBoer and Ryan Grubb are gonna be on the club clock a couple different ways with Alabama yeah. fans. They're going to be watching Max development, wherever saying ends up, what is he doing there? Right. I mean, we're going to have plenty of buzz about that on the round table message board. I'm guessing. You know, what's crazy to me is, I mean, there's no guarantee. Anybody's going to be good. Those rankings don't mean that somebody's going to be good. There's no ranking. Number one quarterback, Blake Barnett. What was he ranked? I mean, there's guys that you've seen, you can get on a list. Now I'm a fan of Julian. I think he's talented. I love he's got a quick throw. I think he's going to get bigger and stronger. I'm a fan of Julian Say, let me be clear. But I'm also I'm also a fan of Austin Mack and Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson and Dylan Lonergan. So I think when you look at that, and it's all about a system too. I mean, Tommy Frazier was a great college quarterback. He didn't fit in everybody's system. You know what I mean? So you come down to that, you look at rankings. I mean, Pat Mahomes went 12th in the draft, wasn't highly recruited. Andrew said it. You don't know what you don't know, but you at least could try to like look at the film and do a little Google search and, and help figure it out before before freaking out. And I do think if Julian Sayan was ranked lower than Austin Mack, I think the board would be getting praised right now. 
So I this, think that ranking, and I get it, number one quarterback in the country, although DJ Ladway is really pushing, there's a decision there. But number one quarterback in the country, that's what people see. And I get the reaction. And they're emotionally attached to him. They don't know Austin Mack. They knew Julian. They followed him the whole year. So I get that. Yeah, and look, I'm with you. I think Julian Sayan has a great chance to early on in his career be a very, very good college quarterback. So you get the impact of this initially. But speaking of that, Andrew, this is something the coaching staff, I'm sure, considered the possibility of saying, if we go through with this, if we bring Mac in, there's a very good possibility that we lose a guy in the room. Maybe two. We'll have to see how this plays out because there's some extenuating factors maybe with a, a, another guy or two in that room right now. But these staffs, they take all of that into account, right? Most important position on the field is quarterback. You've got to have a quarterback in there. <laughs> you got to have somebody that you trust. you got to have a leader in there. And they have guys on teams that they've had to sit down with each one of these guys. Uh, you know, whether it was Jalen Milrow, uh, Ty Simpson, Dylan Lonergan, Julian Sang, they've had to had to have sit downs with these guys once they arrived on campus. And you, know, you go through spring practice, you know, you try to figure out who's going to be the guy going into the fall. You may not know that answer, even though everybody assumes that it's going to be Jalen, uh, who was the start of this past season. But you know, it's a new staff. It's a new ball game. You got to figure out, you know, a lot of things heading into the spring. You don't know who's going to enter the transfer portal. Who's going to be upset? All these, guys, every single player on this team, recruited by Nick Saban and you know his former coaching staff. A lot of players, as we've seen, have exited the program over the course of the last week because of Nick Saban's retirement. You just don't know who else might get into that portal. So you go, you get somebody that you know. Hey, they love. Our system, they love our staff. They know us. We got to get them here. And that's what they did with Austin Mack. And I think we're probably going to see that uh, with some other players here pretty soon as well. Tim, this almost feels like an NFL evaluation of sorts at the quarterback position. Not that the NFL is hung up now as it once was on 6'4", 6'5". Uh, but you see it with Josh Allen right now at the Buffalo Bills. He is one of those guys and can also move. Um, Austin Mack, a good athlete, a multi-sport athlete. Um, do, you, do you get the sense that maybe the take or the bringing over of Mack, who, by the way, you have a year in your system. So when you're talking about the evaluation process for Austin Mack right now, you have that benefit with him. You haven't seen any of these other guys in your system. Yeah. So there's a sense of security, too, in bringing this guy in. And he can also, as you get going and spring practice and those things, not that he'll be up front and drills, but if I'm one of those existing quarterbacks at Alabama right now, that's the guy I'm watching early on because that's obviously what they're looking for. Yeah. First, I want to say, do us a favor, like and subscribe. We do a lot of work. We love this page. I, I never thought I'd love it. I always, you know, never always like being behind the scenes, not being recognized, but I love it. Take one second, hit that like button and subscribe. We appreciate everyone that's done it. Um, we've loved watching the site grow. Of course, the round table and Bama Online is our number one priority, but we enjoy the YouTube because it's easier to explain than having to type everything out. So please help us out and, and thanks for everyone that's done so. You know, on Austin Mac, I mean, they are hosting today, this weekend, they're hosting uh, uh, Jeremy Bernard, a wide yeah. receiver who's got wide receiver one quality. Now, again, if you're short sighted and didn't really dig deep, this is the guy that was the four number four wide receiver at Washington. However, he's against he was behind three top forty or fifty uh, draft picks. The other three wide receivers were going to go ahead of him. You've also got a center from Washington on campus, so two priority positions who probably know Austin Mack fairly well. So just looking at it from the relationship standpoint, um, I think that has to factor in the talent standpoint. I think speaks for itself. And your your point about him knowing the system. Hey, he knows it better than anybody on campus right now as far as players go. And also, you're right, he can help them. I mean, when, you know, when Jalen Milrow and quarterbacks talk, you see it on hard knocks. They sit in a room with their quarterback coach and they talk all day. So this is a guy that can help them out, point them in the right, right direction. So there's a lot of things to like about this, even if you just don't look at the talent aspect. The relationship aspect is coming in handy. I mean, what did we see last night? Who was one of the first people to follow Austin Mack? Ryan Williams, 
all over the message board. Guys were going. In fact, in the first thread I had on the first nugget, the tone literally changed because somebody posted Ryan Williams just followed him. <laughs> and a few were like, okay, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I mean, that's the perception we're dealing with right now. Um, the roller coaster ride, I meant to talk about this earlier. Dude, if you're up for a minute, be prepared to come down. And if you're down for a minute, be prepared to go up because it's literally, you know, it's literally a one for one swap off right now every day. Last night we had, you know, visitors coming in. We had all this news, a surprise visitor late, all these guys coming in and a commitment. This morning we wake up to this. So Hopefully this 12-hour window will continue and there'll be better news this afternoon or this weekend. Yeah, Andrew, uh, Gary, Indiana had the Jackson 5. I know that's going back a ways for the younger folks. Uh, Alabama hosting, I guess, the Washington 5 uh, this yeah. weekend when you talk about transfers. Hey, I tried, Tim. Hey, that's good. Transfers like <laughs> and former signees. Um, we'll get to more of those here momentarily, but Tim hit on it with Ryan Williams. I mean, he's still, for all of this stuff, ranks atop the marquee for me anyway. So I guess for him, and we've already seen some of that perhaps, it'll be interesting to see how Ryan Williams responds to all of these changes, starting with the head coach situation, offensive coordinator, offensive plan, wide receiver attrition, movement at the quarterback position, a lot for Ryan Williams to digest. A lot. And obviously people are going to talk about, you know, the, building that relationship with Coach DeBoer, Coach Grubb, and, you know, this is going to be their second time, uh, at least Coach DeBoer's second time meeting with Ryan, uh, who was in town earlier this week, as Tim reported, on BOL. Um, and that's going to be important. But I think another big important aspect for this weekend is just being around the players, uh, finding out what they've learned about these coaches since they've been on campus, uh, you know, get their feel, because, you know, that's who he's going to be around you know, for the next couple of years, uh, you know, do these players trust these coaches um, who's still around, especially in that freshman class, Jalen and Bachway, Caleb Odom, uh, Peyton Woodyard. I mean, these are guys that, you know, he knows really well that he wants to be around, that he wants to learn from, that he wants to speak with and kind of figure, figure things out. But this is a very important weekend for Ryan. Good to get him back on campus because a week ago, it didn't seem like he was going to make it back to Tuscaloosa at all. Um, you know, Alabama was on the outside looking in. Uh, it, Auburn, Texas, Texas A&M were all, you know, sharks in the water. Uh, they were going after him as soon as he decommitted. Obviously, they were doing that beforehand, but it certainly didn't look like Ryan was going to get back to Tuscaloosa. And now he is for the second time in uh, in five days. So, so pretty big for Alabama to get Ryan on campus this weekend. Tim, when you talk about um, these Washington transfer and signee targets, uh, in terms of immediate impact, I guess it lines up, right? You, you talked about wide receiver Jeremy Bernard, corner, cornerback with Jabbar Muhammad coming in. Looks like Texas, Oregon, thick in that uh, recruitment as well. And then an interior offensive lineman in Parker Brailsford. I mean, when you look at boxes that Alabama is likely trying to check via the transfer portal, I guess these three guys line up pretty well. Yeah, I mean, you're looking to, you know, you're still looking for a wide receiver one in Alabama. I think that was kind of the case last year. I think Bond took that over to some degree, you know, maybe Burton. I think people could argue that um, the home run threat was more Bond. This guy fits that mode, mode, mold with Jeremy. I mean, he's a guy that can come in. He's got speed. He's got plays. He's got, you know, small guys going to make moves and also the center position. I mean, if that doesn't get people excited, if Alabama can land the center, I'm going to be highly disappointed after – after the uh, griping and everything that went on this year. But, yeah, I mean, Jabbar Muhammad's a cornerback. You've seen that room uh, really hit, you know, during the portal. And, uh, you know, it's more than just the portal. It's the graduation, too. I mean, a lot of people, and I saw a lot of this reported yesterday, that there was 25 or whatever the number was, guys in the portal since Nick Saban retired. That's not true. 15 or 16 of them went before he was even – he, before he even retired, I don't think people are good at math sometimes. Or they have an agenda. Either way, I don't care. But um, <laughs> but I do think that, yeah, you've seen that room, you know, as much as the portal. I mean, you lost some guys that were really good that can play, you know. Um, so he would be a guy that comes in. And they all had, like, Pac-12 uh, accolades, too. So guys with the 
you know, 15 game run last year that led to a national championship game. So a lot of experience for these guys. Yeah. Muhammad at the corner makes a lot of sense. Brailsford. I talked about him in a post I had on the round table earlier in the week, not the biggest guy in the world, but very mobile, very smart, a guy that can play guard can play center. Alabama obviously has a need on the football going into 2024. Um, what about Noah Carter? Uh, Andrew, what have we been able to learn about this guy? Because it sounds like the accolades are right where you would want him to be. And in terms of measurables and those type of things, kind of falls in line with the edge guys that we've seen Alabama go at go after under Nick Saban. Yeah, I mean, it's a six foot four, 230 pound um, outside edge rusher uh, committed to Coach DeBoer um, and his staff uh, last summer. I mean, been a solid commitment. I never wavered on the decision at all, signed with Washington uh, in um, in December, and just on, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, was released from his NIL, uh, NLI, excuse me, um, and now he's going to be in Tuscaloosa this weekend for an official visit. I think things are probably going, you know, probably going to move fast with him. Uh, he doesn't have any other visits scheduled at this time. He's from Arizona. He was the defensive player of the year. Uh, in the state of Arizona, but he played on both sides of the football, played outside linebacker, played wide receiver, very similar to Jay Sean Ross, who signed with Alabama uh, from uh, from Kansas City back in uh, back in December. So this would be a bit, another big get. Had a great week at the uh, at the. I always want to call it the Army All American Bowl, but it's the All American Bowl now. <laughs> but uh, but he had a great week out there. Um, was one of the stock up guys. Uh, was one of the top performers at practice one day. Uh, Charles Power, uh, who tra- uh, who Tim mentioned earlier, uh, our director of scouting and rankings, uh, raved about him. So this would be a great get, and certainly somebody that uh, had had a lot of praise for uh, Coach DeBoer when I spoke to him the other night. He's called him the best coach in the country. But I'm one of the best coaches, if not the best coach in the country. Had a great relationship with the staff and uh, really excited to uh, to visit Alabama for the first time this weekend. Tim, after a little bit of panic amongst the fan base earlier in the week, we've seen some Alabama representation out on the recruiting trail in the last couple of days. Big chap. How about Josh Chapman out there repping the script A? Denzel Duvall right now just getting guys out there to let some of these these recruits probably I would guess even more so 2025s and beyond that you know we're out here we're going to be out here and it's coming yeah Charlie Potter had a great note last night that said um you know and me and Andrew confirmed that as well that the Alabama staff that the coaches from Washington can't actually be on the road yet something to do with their contract working out the stuff that only Jimmy Stein a former lawyer can probably explain certainly not Tim Watts, who's only good at fantasy football, can explain. But there's some things to work out. And that's why you saw we've heard uh, Denzel was out there on the road. Um, Denzel Duvall, Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Now, we know Freddie Roach and those guys, Gillespie, are on the road because we've seen them. We've heard stories. So that makes sense. But, yeah, you got that support staff, you know, dusting it off, hopping in the rental, getting out here and being seen. We see them on social media. So, you know, I think a lot of the stuff the Washington staff's doing is from uh, – will be on campus and from, you know, their phones right now. And, again, their top priority has to be working this roster and seeing where we're at. So, Andrew, uh, as you think about this weekend with the Washington transfer targets, Ryan Williams in town, give us a little bit of what you're going to be keeping an eye on, ear open for the most. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, obviously, we uh, we're going to continue to watch the transfer portal, see what potentially happens there, um, you know, in or out. Uh, yeah, I think that the guys coming in this weekend, a few of those guys that we're going to be watching very closely. Um, you know, the one guy that we don't expect to make a decision just yet is Jabbar Muhammad. Came off the visit to Texas on Wednesday, uh, visiting Alabama. Arrived last night on Thursday night and is going to spend today in Tuscaloosa. As of right now, he does intend on taking an official visit to Oregon next weekend before making a decision. There was some talk that he might make a decision uh, this weekend, but it looks like he's going to push it off until next week. So we're going to be watching um, you know, Jermay uh, Bernard, the wide receiver transfer, uh, Parker Brailsford, uh, you know, very closely, see what kind of happens with uh, with those guys this weekend. Noah Carter, uh, you know, like I mentioned, this is his only official visit so far. Ryan Williams, 
how are things going to go with him, especially with the news on Julian Sane? Because he was really close with Julian Sane throughout this entire process. Now he's going to be around. He'll be around some guys that he knows, obviously, um, you know, Jalen and Bakwe and, uh, you know, some good friends that are on the team that he's gotten to know over the course of the last two years. So how are things going to go with him this weekend? And, uh, you know, what's the relationship going to be like with the uh, with the coaching staff moving forward? So those are some things that we're – Watching very closely on BOL, and we will continue to have updates on the uh, BOL roundtable. Tim, I'd like, big that, go I'd like ahead. to add this on Ryan. The thing about Ryan is Ryan's a popular guy, and he loves people. I mean, I made that joke earlier in the year that you dropped him off in North Korea. He'd have 11 best friends, and they'd be playing basketball or playing Fortnite within two hours. So I do think that getting to know him – I mean, obviously him and Jalen Mbakwe – are extremely close. You know, we reported that uh, that he showed up on campus, you know, this week, and him and next thing you know, him and Jalen were on uh, social media um, kind of hanging out together and doing all that kind of stuff. Go ahead, Travis. Tim, biggest obstacle for uh, Alabama and this staff right now? I mean, obviously you're dealing with the, the retirement of Nick Saban from a perception perspective. You got NIL funds flowing, it appears, yeah. just about – well, not everywhere, but from outlets that you would expect or yes to all that. You know, the thing is, five years ago, we expected this just to be, is this, you know, the decision to be, is this the best fit for me? Do I like the new staff? Should I stay? That was on my only concern when Nick Saban retired, which is the only concern we had when Mike Shula was let go or Franchoni left or Mike Price did his thing. You know, that was our only concern, the relationships they had built. We didn't really know at the time that you were just going to be able to buy a kid right off campus and he would make that decision completely financial. So that's changed it in a lot of ways. So, yeah, this staff, again, you know, I've said this like 20 times. I'm going to keep saying it. We don't know what – we don't know how this is going to turn out. It's never happened before. The GOAT never retired. The greatest college coach in history – has retired. It hadn't happened since, you know, Bear Bryant maybe or some others would throw other names in there. Um, but this is a big deal because times had changed so much, like you said, with the portal, with the NIL. I mean, the window's open a month. What the hell is happening 27 days after that new coach is named? I mean, give them 10 days or a week. Let everybody figure it out. It'll up the percentage of making these decisions for both sides. I just think it's a long window. So, um I'm not surprised by anything, to be honest. But I will say this, and I'll keep saying it. If you focused on the ones who left instead of the ones who stayed, I had ten, I had double-digit people say, is there going to be any good news? On the day that friggin' ESPN put out great news, Malachi, friggin', you know, Milrow, uh, Dante Lawson, and Booker, good Lord, Booker just came as hard as he could with no amount of money can make me lose my legacy here. There was great news that day. So if you're going to focus on the ones you never really got to know, you know, the 2024s, we never even got to see them play, which stinks. I mean, I'd focus on the ones who are actually staying. Andrew, I guess uh, as much as we talk about this current window that Alabama's in, uh, unless some of these cats are going to enroll at like DeVry, they're going to have to get to their next stops pretty quickly, right? I mean, you got to be in classes. You got to be enrolled. Uh, if you're going to do the mid-year thing anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm interested to see kind of w which programs are going to maybe bend that rule a little bit and try to sneak kids in on campus regardless. And, and you know, you never know. A lot of these kids may just go to campus and, uh, you know, get on campus and not be in school uh, until until the summer. So, or they may go home and they may go, well, Julian may go back to California for, you know, the next three or four months and, and then make a decision. But, now, this is actually you know, obviously a short window. It's a tough window for Alabama, as Tim mentioned. I mean, uh, who in the hell made the decision that you know, the transfer portal window was going to be open for 30 days right here, just picking and plucking you know, anybody that they possibly can off this roster? I mean, it, it's absolutely brutal for Alabama right now. You know, hopefully things are going to um, – improve probably a little bit later this spring with the transfer portal. Uh, Alabama's going to be able to have some, you know, options there. But I think this weekend, like we've been mentioning, is pretty big, especially at some key positions, defensive back, wide receiver, uh, center. Uh, if Alabama can get a couple of those guys uh, in the fold, uh, you know, you stop the bleeding a little bit and uh, and start to move on. But you got to focus on the guys that are on your team. 
guys that have decided to stay. People, people are insane that are saying, I'm done with football, not going to be watching it anymore. Guess what? There's a lot of kids on this Alabama team that love Alabama, that are staying here in Tuscaloosa, that are going to be fighting like hell for this program and for this fan base. So, you know what? You got to support them. You got to continue to watch. And you know, I still think Alabama is going to be just fine. Tim, I think the uh, intent of this window was good. I think the intentions were good because this Austin Mack, Julian Sayan situation kind of plays into it, right? You sign as a quarterback. Your coach retires, in comes a new coach. Austin Mack has the ability to move on after his coach leaves Washington. Kind of encapsulates maybe what the intention has been. Now, to be able to just mass exodus, regardless of circumstances, that's obviously very problematic. But just in terms of aligning these windows and these periods in a way that's more sensible is something that's got to happen, doesn't it? I like what the I like this window if your coaches leaves because I think a lot of people will sign with a coach. I don't think you necessarily leave, but you need a window to say, hey, do I want to be here? But 30 days, shoot, what is that? That is a that's a second DUI, you know, time, you know, in, in jail. I mean, what are you that's the longest thing I can remember. I mean, I thought the early signing period was long because it was three days. I was like, why is this so long? And they're like, hold my beer, you know, hold my beer, watch this transfer portal window. I just like it's been a month. It feels like it's already been a month. Yeah. I mean, dude, you want to blow your mind tonight at 8 30 will be Caleb DeBoer's been Alabama's coach for for a uh for a week. (laughs) For a week. Like dude, that's absurd. Like I keep like looking at these time frames and like yelling at people. I'm even yelling at myself, like it's only been a week, it's only been three days. So I mean, a lot has happened. I think if we ever at the time, time stamping how this thing has went the first week would be really interesting to see the reaction that comes and goes. And, I'm, and again, with Julian saying, hey, Travis, what about Washington as a destination for Julian saying, by the way? Maybe. Kind of get out there. I know you know, I, people have talked about SC, but SC just brought in the UNLV transfer. So. I mean, that Arizona offense was fun. I mean, you get back to Jet the West Fish, Coast. And Jed Fish is a quarterback guy. Yeah, so I'm just thinking that you want some more storylines to tie to it, but I just think I just think in one week, I personally, if you'd have told me everything that was available available when he retired, I would have thought it was much worse. And I'm not saying it's not bad. You don't want to lose Proctor, but I think Proctor was pretty close to leaving anyways. You don't want to lose Downs. You don't want to lose those guys. Some of them didn't even get a chance to meet the coach. You know what I mean? Some of them were just out, which tells me they were pretty close and only staying for saving. But right now you're seeing a test of who wants to be on this team, who wants to be here, who do you want to ride with, who do you want to fight with. And, again, we've discussed that there's going to be a little bit of that camaraderie and we did this together with the guys that do stay. You know, I guess, too, you think about the teams that are in the mix every year, getting back to saying a little bit, and who makes sense as far as being a quarterback away. We hear that again, typically more with the NFL, like if Bill Belichick goes to the Falcons, the Falcons are a quarterback away. But from the college perspective, guys, Michigan loses J.J. McCarthy. So there's a spot there potentially. I know there's been talk about, I think, Alex Orgy, the backup, who is kind of a dual threat type. Um, you know, And you're talking about saying, so people are going to make room regardless for for a guy like that i guess hey anything else uh guys before we wrap it up no i mean i get i mean yeah i would just say to the bama fans i mean you're kind of i mean it's not a great analogy but i've never ordered a meal and went and looked in the went and looked in the stove and said this sucks this tastes like crap i've never i'm gonna wait get it finish the whole thing start to finish and it's hard but but there's still a couple of waves left right First, let's see what you've got to go into spring. We'll know that, you know, in the next three weeks, two weeks, whatever. That's your spring team. And then again, after that, you go through spring, the portal opens, and you see what you've got going into August. But what you've got on August, early August, July, late July, that's your football team. That's when you can say, holy crap, we got none of this. Holy crap, who's going to be that? That's when you can say that. And I get it right now. There's more questions than answers. And it pisses people off. It's frustrating for us. We dig all day for information, get some here, miss some there, rumors all over, chase rumors. 
a lot of rumors have chosen have proven not to be true a lot more than have been right but i guess that's just the nature of the business so i preach patience which is crazy because travis among all people can tell you I have no patience. Yeah, I have who, no is, least patience. Who, is, who is this guy at the bottom of yeah, the screen? Yeah, my wife can hear me do a podcast going, everybody be patient. And I know she is thinking bad words. <laughs> that guy me. is full of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm texting her, turkey papa. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Ma, chicken. Yeah. Absolutely. Screaming over his shoulder. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Andrew, we're going to be locked into BamaOnline.com. Ryan Williams on campus, the Washington Five, as we've dubbed them. Uh, so much to hang out and be on the lookout with us right there at Bama Online. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel here, please do that right now. Hit like, turn on those notifications. You'll get all of our video content as it drops right here on the YouTube home for Bama Online. And of course, BamaOnline.com. That's where it all starts. The roundtable, anything we know as we know it, you're going to know it on the roundtable at BamaOnline.com. For Tim Watts and Andrew Bone, Travis Ryer, thanking you once again. Until next time, so long, everybody.